Thank you, thank you. Woohoo! Welcome to Good News Week and the big news, rabbits! Rabbits! <laughs> They're back in such a big way, farmers in South Australia are being urged to get rid of them with poison gas and explosives. <laughs> Blow your rabbits in the air like you just don't care! <laughs> Blow your rabbits! Blow your rabbits! Blow your rabbits in the air like you just don't care! <laughs> It'll be like furry fireworks. <laughs> I think that's why they call it shock and awe. Oh. <laughs> Blowing up rabbits does make them a lot fluffier. <laughs> Not as cute though. <laughs> and if it all goes well, we can use the same technique to solve the problem with the boat people. <laughs> I can't believe you clapped for that, Australia. You let me down. <laughs> let me down. I'm ashamed of you. I wanted silence at the end of that. <laughs> yes, after decades researching the most effective way to destroy rabbits, the CSIRO got their latest technique from an Elmer Fudd cartoon. <laughs> the main problem with explosives is it's not very, very quiet. <laughs> The experts warn, when you do throw dynamite into a hole, watch out it isn't thrown out of another hole just behind you by a waskily wabbit. <laughs> of course, to get into the heart of a large warren where the explosives can do the most damage, farmers will have to employ suicide ferrets. <laughs> and tiny vests packed with Semtex. I'm just not sure it's a good idea. We tried to wipe out rabbits with myxomatosis and they developed an immunity. Then we tried Khaleesi virus and they developed an immunity to that. If rabbits develop an immunity to dynamite, <laughs> we're gonna be in trouble. What if the bunnies evolved to beat the explosives like growing armor plating and wings and shooting lasers from their eyes? <laughs> That's just one of the many scenarios put forward by Barnaby Joyce. <laughs> Ah, in Canberra, Parliament House is going to save $120,000 a year by getting rid of its pot plants. <laughs> the problem is, while they're sending back the plants, bureaucrats don't have a clue what to do with the pots. <laughs> Lots of pots. What do you do with them? For now, they're going to put them in storage, or as the government likes to call it, temporary detention. <laughs> What do you do with a bunch of useless, empty vessels in Parliament? <laughs> They've already got a Senate. <laughs> Tony Abbott doesn't know what to do with them because moving pots is a housewife's job. <laughs> oh, 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 the lady's getting a bit angry there. Maybe they should stack them outside to help the Prime Minister in case the brakes fail on his Toyota Prius. <laughs> or every Thursday, funny terracotta hat day. <laughs> the US Army has established a new interrogation unit for questioning terror suspects. But it's okay because they won't be using torture. They'll be doing scientific research. <laughs> you know, the sort of research you might conduct on a lab rat or a whale. <laughs> The unit is called the High Value Interrogation Group and was set up to replace its predecessor, Fingernails Are Us. <laughs> the research could finally answer questions like, do terrorists bounce? <laughs> What's the boiling point of a terrorist? <laughs> and how do you get a terrorist into a milk bottle? <laughs> And if we can't make them talk, we will make them listen by growing an ear on their back. <laughs> the only real problem is when the prisoners confess before you've finished your experiment. <laughs> but it's not all bad. The terrorists might get lucky and find themselves being used for uh, shampoo research. <laughs> Ahmed, how shiny does your beard look now? <laughs> and that's the good news.
you. Good evening. Tonight, barely able to contain our excitement, the Leader of the House, Mikey Robbins. He hosted a TV show called You Bet Your Ass. He's currently touring the world with Ricky Gervais and he's an international stand-up star from Toronto, the compelling Stuart Francis. <laughs> and bringing his good stuff to the Rhino Room in Adelaide very soon, the sweet and playful Tom Gleeson. <laughs> and they're getting no respect from the yummy Yahoo Claire Hooper. <laughs> Winner of Best Newcomer at last year's Melbourne International Comedy Festival, host of Triple J Breakfast and heading to the powerhouse in Brisbane, the boy wonder, Tom Ballard. <laughs> and quite simply, one of Australia's most beloved television personalities. Oh no, wait, it's Corinne Grant. <laughs> Ah, so we've all been on before apart from you, Stuart. I, I don't know what I'm doing here. Uh, no, one's, no one's even heard of me. I, I, should, be on the, I should be on the white room. <laughs> oh, bam, he comes in early, comes in hard, comes in fast. <laughs> That's what she said last night. <laughs> I, actually, I actually can't make fun of the white room because I did a screen test for it and they didn't choose me. <laughs> How full on's that? That's I was reading tragic. the critiques of that show and I was like... No one likes it, and I didn't even get to be on that. <laughs> but we have you here, and it's lovely to have you here. Tom. Oh, thank you very yeah. much. It's good to be here. And Stuart, are you, are you touring this country? You're taking your special. Band I just of arrived time? Tuesday, and yeah. I love it. I love it here. <laughs> it's like ste stepping back into the '70s. You guys still have. <laughs> no, you still have racism in Woolworths. Like, what's not to like? You come from. Canada. You're not allowed to talk about stepping back in time when you come from Canada. Canada's like America's New Zealand. Exactly. Yeah. Or America's Tasmania. Uh, ouch. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Just like that. You're like, don't accuse us of being racist, you crazy canook. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> it certainly started very early, hasn't it? <laughs> We're oh. giving him the Harry Connick Jr. tree, but thanks your input yes. on your bike! <laughs> Did I say I love being here? Yeah. <laughs> That's better. Uh, and Tom, you Hello. well? I'm how's, well, thank you. How's it going on Triple J Breakfast? Are you enjoying it? It's good. It's not as good as when you did it, Paul. Oh, well, that was a long time. I did it with Mike. Yes, yeah. yes. I'll never forget the morning Paul started crying during a Nick Cave song and we thought, he's not coping with these early mornings very well. <laughs> 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 I, was, uh, I, th I think it was, it was a Waterboys song, though. Hold yeah. the moon, hold the moon. At, uh, I, had to, I had to take him in the corner and hold him and nurse yeah. him. <laughs> I, was, uh, I was listening in the morning. You came in two hours late. I was pretty hey. proud of you. Two hours late to a three-hour oh, show. It wasn't two hours late. <laughs> It wasn't too late, it was half an hour late. All right. How long have you been working then when you came in that late? Uh, five weeks. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's very, very Triple J, isn't it? Yeah, Please tell right. me you've been out all night doing something hardcore and, and youthful. No? No. <laughs> I know that I'm getting old because when I hear that you, heard, you know, turned up two hours late for me, I'm just thinking, oh, my taxes are paying for that shit. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? like I'm, I'm trying to find a call, but I'm annoyed. I always love it when we have you on. Look at the beautiful blonde hair again. It just seems to be a thing that's happening. <laughs> Can I just say, I love the bit of the start where all the paper goes everywhere. I was in Good News Week, you're trying to be topical. This is cut out from the yellow pages. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we're, we're trying to be helpful for people that might be looking for electricians as well. <laughs> good idea, I say. And Corinne. What? How are you? Yeah, good. <laughs> and hosting something, is that right? Hosting something? Yeah, I host something yeah, yeah. on another network. On another network? Awkward. Oh. <laughs> Am I allowed to talk about it or not? Yeah, yeah, talk about it. Yeah, it's awesome. It's a show called Airways. It's great. It's cranky people losing their shit. <laughs> Very funny TV. Hey, sounds like this show. Yeah. <laughs> when I first heard that you're doing a show called Airways, I thought it was about respiratory problems. <laughs> I thought it was going to be like half hour show yeah. of people going, ah. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> It's just a half hour of me wheezing. <laughs> Getting a puffer. Oh, that's better. Oh, no, I need another, another puff. It's riveting television. Riveting. Uh, shall we begin the show? Yes. Our show. Oh, this show. Wow. Yes. First business in this show is What's the Story? Mikey, Stuart, Tom. 
stay cool. Right. Okay. Oh. That's a series of images. They've got to put them together to make a story. Garrett, that's Do a roof tin foil. Yeah. That's not. It's, it's the worst midnight oil video ever. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey! I love it here. <laughs> How can we sleep when our roofs are burning? <laughs> Tell me, someone has already made that joke at some point somewhere, surely. Yeah, but has someone made this one, Tom, for you? How can we sleep when our heads are burning? <laughs> yeah, the sun. <laughs> I like it. You make me feel like I'm from Canada. <laughs> No, 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 Stuart, you, you, you might be aware of Peter Garrett, as you said, as yes. a midnight oil, but uh, he, uh, he, had a, he had a sea change, a, a, a changed careers uh, mm. late in life, which is always a good thing, mm -hmm. and he became a politician. He's now Minister for the Environment, the Arts, and doing that a lot. <laughs> uh, yeah. And there's been a bit of uh, controversy over this latest uh, uh, insulation uh, bats in the Belfry scheme. There's, been, there's actually been some, some, some tragedies. And, uh, There's good reason that he didn't get it right. I mean, he doesn't even know how to insulate his head. <laughs> <laughs> and I know that that's the pot calling the kettle ball, but whatever. Who's your education minister? Yahoo Serious? <laughs> <laughs> Ow! Yeah. Ow! Oh, I'll go there. Oh! I love it here. You're <laughs> Coming in hard with the Yahoo gear, yeah, really. Yeah, yeah. Like, I, I forgot that Yahoo series existed. And... If you actually get off the... You've got an you... erection right now, you know that. You're not just talking about it. If, mm, if you awkward. Look, no, you're the, no, it's really, really embarrassing. If you look very carefully in the mental uh, asylum scene of, uh, of young Einstein, um, I play an extra. <laughs> I tell you what, that's... One good reason to go down to the old video store and try and dig out a video cassette. Which, were, you in the, uh, were you in the manic depressives room? Yep, 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 yep. I yep. loved that. I rewound that and watched that over and over. You okay, did Okay, I'm, I'm the 140 kilo guy wearing a nappy. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, that's, 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 that sounds like my wedding night. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Don't you hate being typecast? <laughs> yeah, no. Uh, uh, well, yes, I've got to say, what, what a shit showbiz story that was. I know! <laughs> I know. Well, you've got to say it here, because you're not going to get to say it on Parkinson's. <laughs> 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 uh, uh, so th th there's been a major controversy over this uh, uh, rollout uh, insulation scheme. Uh, the opposition's on the minister's back to resign, and it's, it's, it's basically a bit of all-round not good, happy time for anyone. Uh, they have it. Ten points to them. Let's move on. In a last-ditched attempt to hose down the controversy and the burning houses, the federal government has cancelled its $2.5 billion home insulation scheme. But Peter Garrett may still have to face the music. Finally, a task he's qualified for. <laughs> it's ironic the environment minister's name is Garrett, because isn't a Garrett a small, uncomfortable place just below a roof? Oh, 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 uncertain. <laughs> Bad luck, we're moving on. There's nothing. There's nothing more frightening than an unprepared, undertrained worker in a high risk position, especially when he's the environment minister. <laughs> no, no, yes, no. Claire, Tom, Corinne, all yes. aboard. All right, oh. go. Boat, boat, what? Boat. Boat, boat, water. Uh, water, boat. Duck. Duck. <laughs> oh, Swan. Oh. Bus. Bus. Bus, water. What Our is it? It was a duck. little bit idiot Swan survived. bus water. <laughs> You've got it. They've got it. Ten points. Ten points. Yeah. Oh, oh, any more influence? It sort of is. It, it sort of is. That's pretty much the answer. The ducks. The duck bus water. You know, like I actually think it's a genius idea making it's a, a bus that can go underwater because with rising sea levels, eventually people are going to catch on that we might actually need buses that can float. <laughs> but um, does it go under the water or on top of the water? Like, is it a bus boat or a bus submarine? It is not a submarine. Um, That's a shame because that would be cool. It would be cool. <laughs> I'm, so the way the I understand it operates work? on the boat and then it pulls out. No, I think it drowned. I think they took it for a test run and it drowned a bit. Oh really? Like a little bit. Yeah. That sounds like a really horrible episode of Thomas the Tank Engine. <laughs> How good would it be if they got that bus water duck swan thing that you're talking about? Yeah, yes. that's what it's and called. And just used them in Venice. Just got rid of the gondolas and just drove them around the canals. 
Can you still sing opera on the bus? <laughs> I think it's the amphibious. It's the amphibus, the amphibious bus. Is that what and they called it? The, the amphibus? I, I don't know if they did. I think they might have. Terrible but, name. But, but it's the fact that they want to make one and it didn't work. I think that's the story. That's a story? They had a crack and it didn't work out for them? <laughs> Sounds like one of your showbiz stories. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Ever tell about the time I was an extra in a, in a, in a bourbon commercial? No, no good. No. <laughs> you know what it sounds like? It sounds like they just reversed a bus into water. <laughs> yeah. And when that didn't work, they said, no, 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 it's an empty it's an bus. It's empty bus that we reversed in there. Yeah. It was supposed to go underwater when we left the handbrake off. <laughs> do we have it right? You do have it right. Really? Ten points. The UK's first floating bus service has been launched in Scotland. Wow, a floating bus. Or as we used to call it, a ferry. <laughs> Unfortunately, the Amphibus ran into problems on its first day of testing. Apparently, while you're in the water, you're not supposed to open the doors to pick people up. <laughs> the vehicle crashed into a ramp as it came out of the River Clyde. The wheels on the bus go skid, whiz, pop, blub, 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 blub. <laughs> Clunk. Uh, the hull was breached, then the pneumatics got jammed and the emergency bagpipes failed to deploy from the ceiling. <laughs> uh, it broke down after only 30 minutes in the water. Turns out the driver had blown a seal. <laughs> there we go. Oh, oh. Spinning the balls on his nose, is that what you're uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, they, they got there before you. Yeah, sadly. There was a lot more to that joke, but let's just move on. <laughs> So after one absolutely titanic round of Good News Week, the Robins team are on ten points and the Hooper team are on ten points. Coming up, Stephen, Simon and Scott. What? During the break, as our truck almost hit Tony Abbott, both teams are given three clues to a recent strange but true story. Robins, Francis and Gleeson got a prehistoric creature. <laughs> you have no shame, you have no shame. I have no shame! Have no I shame, love your you? work, Lady Gaga. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, for a start, the trunk and the head are from a different mammoth. <laughs> Uh, that, that's, that's actually not the trunk. <laughs> How do you breathe with that thing? <laughs> uh, we also have takeaway food. I found this in Mikey's dressing room. Um, <laughs> not the meat, the glove. <laughs> <laughs> hey, what happens in the Ice Age stays in the Ice Age. <laughs> hey, look, I'm on the luge! <laughs> <laughs> and uh, finally this. Oh, what a great clue I get to introduce. Tripod! <laughs> Yes. G'day. Are you touring at the moment? You're, uh, we are touring at the moment. We're doing a show called Tripod versus the Dragon. Yes. And we're touring with a, a fantastic singer who you might see later in the program, actually, and that's, that's another reason it's exciting. And who is that singer? Alana Stone. Alana I mean. Stone? Yeah. Have you heard of her? I have heard of her. Yeah. She's gorgeous. Yeah, she's well, soon, you will soon, after working with us in our show, you'll definitely know <laughs> oh, yeah. this woman. <laughs> He wants to sing the hint now. Good to have you back. <laughs> and have you got a clue for us? Yep. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's right. There's a song. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> Two, three, four. In the day we sweated out on the streets of a runaway American dream. <laughs> By night we rolled through mansions of glory and suicide machines. Strong from pain. Injected and stepping out over the lane. Whoa, baby, this town rips the bones off your back. It's a death trap. It's a suicide rap. You better get out while we're young. Cause tramps like us, baby, we were born to run.
gorgeous. Uh, it got uh, a little William Shatner spoken word in the middle of it. Yeah, there, look, right? you know, I, I, got, I like to think I find my own, found my own voice these days, and it's uh, William Shatner's voice. So. <laughs> I would, I would like to propose that you also found Neil Diamond's voice. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's in there somewhere. And I found Robin Gibbs' face as well. So. <laughs> I'm, I'm sitting on a winner. <laughs> You're an entertainment Frankenstein. <laughs> you guys do Fleetwood Mac? Because I'd love to hear something from Tusk. No, we don't do Fleetwood Mac. We don't do Fleetwood Mac songs, but we are sleeping with each other, so it's sort of, <laughs> sort of relevant. Oh. That's how we get all our songs. Yeah, thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. That's Tripod. And Hooper, Ballard and Grant have a voodoo doll. It's really, oh. it's clever. Like the theory is I would go into Tom's dressing room, I'd get a hairbrush of his and I'd get hair out of him and I'd weave the hair in and, and then I'd like, you know, jab him. Ah! Or, or I could just go like this. Ow! <laughs> it would be so much easier. Oh, so it was a bit hard. Yeah. Oh. There's no, I mean, there's no point to it at all, but you know. But it so. was your nipple, so it was a bit sensitive, wasn't it? <laughs> we also have a feather boa. Nikki Webster had a sex change. <laughs> I just want to say this is homophobic. I'm really disappointed in Channel 10. That feels good, doesn't it? Feels great. <laughs> well, yeah, it reminds me of Scouts. <laughs> which, which Scouts did you go to? Oh, no. that, uh, that hat makes you look ridiculous. <laughs> 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 And this. Yes, I'm not singing either. I've brought along the lovely who is touring with Tripod, Alana Stone! Hi. Alana Stone. Hi, how are you guys? We're very well. That's We're good. very well. Um, you've just got this new... Just a flimsy little thing there. CD out. I love it. Songs <laughs> penned by yourself? I penned them, yes. I was the penny. Uh, what's it like touring with Tripod? Yeah. Uh, oh, are they nice to you? They're very nice. They're, yeah, sort of eerily nice. <laughs> like they're trying to get the best out of me for some reason. Yeah, you're going to wake up one morning in a bathtub missing your kidneys. With no kidneys. <laughs> that, uh, that accordion makes you look ridiculous. It's <laughs> protecting my kidneys, man. <laughs> Alana, have you got a clue for us? I do. I hope I do. Let's see how it goes. She was a fast machine She kept her motor clean She was the best ever woman That I ever seen She had those sightless eyes Telling me no lies Knocking me out With those American lies Taking more than Get rid of those three fellas. You don't need those fellas. I used to not know what that song was about, but now I do. <laughs> I don't know about you guys, but I got a tripod. A lot of stone, ladies and gentlemen. Big round of applause. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That was awesome. If you're a fan of Australian politics, and how could you not be? You'll know February is a special time. This week we celebrate the birthdays of former Prime Ministers George Reid and Billy McMahon and the resignations of Robert Menzies and Bob Hawke. We're lucky enough to have one of the foremost experts on public life with us tonight. So it's time for Political Mastermind. Mikey Robbins, you have the call. Good 
Dead man walking. <laughs> this is because I've been complaining about the wacky hats, isn't it? Didn't it? Could be. Could be something to do with that. Every week you go and say you're, what is it, dehumanised? I, I, I get an email from my sister saying you're, you're an intelligent man. Why do they make you wear those stupid hats? Well, this is your chance to prove that you are an intelligent man to the people of Australia. You are well versed with Australian politics. It's one of your... Hobbies. Hobbies? Yeah. Areas yeah. of interest? Yeah. Your study? Lo yeah, lonely fat child. Yes, yes. Okay. Keep moving. <laughs> so how long have you been investigating Australian politics or looking into it? Oh, I, um, I first got sort of politicised during uh, the Whitlam era. I was an uh, eight-year-old. Right. Actually, I was ten. I'm Were you like... on the steps? <laughs> do, you know, do you know one of the funny things about uh, the, on the steps at Parliament House? Oh, I'd like to hear this. I'd really like you to stop pointing at me. <laughs> <laughs> well, apparently... Um, um, uh, Norman Gunston was on the steps as well. Mm. Yeah, just standing just, just behind Goff. And Bob Hawke told him to bugger off. Mikey? Yes, mate? Is this another shit showbiz story? <laughs> You're in the perfect position for a shit showbiz story down there. You're even in Parkinson formation. Uh. Shall we begin? Yeah, why and not? Test your knowledge on Australian politics. Yeah, okay, Paulie boy. What was the Melbourne Agreement? <laughs> Luckily, I'll give you a series of multiple choice. Great. What was the Melbourne Agreement? Right. A series of drastic economic measures instigated in Australia by an envoy from the Bank of England during the Great Depression. Yeah. Yes. A scandal that surfaced in 1948, alleging a meeting at which members of both Labor and Liberal agreed to influence Reserve Bank policy to benefit wealthy benefactors of both parties. Uh -huh. Or a secret plan hatched in 1907 by the East Coast Premiers to sabotage the choice of Canberra as Australia's national capital. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just thinking there was, there was a conference called it's known as the Premier's Conference. It was also held in Melbourne. It was uh, from an envoy by, by, by the bank during the Depression. It was the reason why there was the latest schism between Jack Lang and the Labor government. So I'm going to go with the first one. Let's just see if Mikey has the right Yes, yes, oh, well, very impressive, very impressed with that oh, one. Yeah. That was great, well done. Yeah, I agree with that. In 1901, how was Australia's first federal flag chosen? A oh. national competition sponsored by a flag manufacturer? Yeah. A national competition sponsored by a tobacco company? Mm -hmm. Or a national competition sponsored by the country's first lottery? I thought it was actually just drawn on the back of a beer coaster. <laughs> Do you know what? I've got a weird feeling, and I, I, I could be wrong on this, but I think it might be B, the tobacco company. Because there's just something wrong about that. There's something so wonderfully wrong, I'm just going to go with that. OK, ladies and gentlemen, let's have a look and see if Mikey is right. Ah! Oh, you're very, you're going well, you're going well, sadly. Yeah. <laughs> I was hoping you'd fall apart and be in tears by this stage. Oh, no, 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 that's after the show. Now, which of the following parties has never produced a Prime Minister? Yeah. The United Australia Party, no. the Free Trade Party, mm -hmm. or the Commonwealth Party? <sighs> Jesus. Now, the UAP... Could you not blaspheme as well? <laughs> <laughs> no pointing and no blaspheme. OK. Shit. Uh, I'm going to go with the Commonwealth Party, actually. I'm going to go with the Commonwealth Party. Commonwealth Party? Yeah, let's have a look. Oh, yeah. oh wow! It's incredible, ladies and gentlemen. The heat is on. If only, if only my, my, my modern history teacher, Mr Withers, was still alive. <laughs> I, I ran him over. Anyway. Which party yes. did Prime Minister George Reid represent? Ah, Jesus. The Nationalist Party? No. Oh. The Protectionist Party? Ooh. Or the Free Trade Party? Free Trade, Free Free Trade. Party. Uh, I'm gonna... I'm gonna go with the Protectionist Party on this one, Paul. Lock in B, Eddie. <laughs> <laughs> ah, yes, and isn't it funny how a little bit of smugness can bring you undone? Let's see ah. if he's right. <laughs> ah. I'll suck. just scrub out that five that I've wrote there. <laughs> <laughs> Australia's second federal election was the first to include women voters. Yeah. When was this election held? Uh, well, South Australia was the first uh, colony to give women the vote in, in, in virtually in, in the whole Western world. So we've had a long tradition of women voting. I'm going to... Are you going to give me some options to think about? Yes, but you seem to be sailing into the void yourself. <laughs> I didn't want to hold you back just in case you managed to nail it just, just by yourself. Okay, okay. I mean, have a crack. Well, I'm, I'm thinking the year was 1903. Uncanny. Uncanny. Uh, Extraordinary. 
Um, Extraordinary. I, uh, elections tend to be held near the end of the year, yep. so... Do you want the month? Was it? Yeah, right. Oh, you are. Something. December... <laughs> December 16th, 1903. Uh. November 2nd... Oh. <laughs> 1903. Uh. Or October the 11th. 1903. Gee, it's a pity I can't give you points just for the 1903. That was spot on. <laughs> I'm going to go November the 2nd. I'm going to go B. Oh, oh, December the 16th. I'll come on. I got the friggin' oh. year! Oh, you're so good. Oh, you're so close to this one as well. It's been on the tip of your tongue almost twice. December 6th. Oh. So, November 2nd. Oh. October 11th. Oh. You're not reading anything into my reaction, no. are you? No! Look, just, just to kill the agony, November the 2nd, 1903. Let's see if Mikey was right. Sadly, no. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You ever touch me again, I'll kill you. Here's the last one. Right. You've done extraordinarily well. OK. Mikey, cool. sorry, can I just say, any credibility you've got by getting these answers right is kind of undermined by the fact that your shoelaces are under. <laughs> I'm, um, I'm not good with my hands. <laughs> oh, that's not true. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Who is the oldest serving member of Parliament? Yeah. Billy Hughes. Right. Robert Menzies. Yeah. Or Philip Ruddock? Well, see, Ruddock's not fair because he is actually the undead. <laughs> <laughs> he died in the 80s and has been feasting on human flesh ever since. <laughs> uh, oh, jeez. Hughes, Hughes, he stuck around like a vegetarian turd. You couldn't flush him. <laughs> I'm going to go with Billy Hughes. I'm, 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 I'm winging this one. I'm going to go with Billy Hughes. Let's see if Mikey has it. Yes. Oh! Absolutely brilliant. I didn't expect you to get one. Oh, no, no, no. And with a score of 25, you've reached the level of not as smart as Barnaby Joyce. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the phenomenal Mikey Robbins. <laughs> Don't go away. More political mastermind after the break. Mastermind, Claire Hooper, it's time to face political mastermind. No. Come on. No. No. See if you can do as well as Mikey. No. No. Come on down. I'm terrified. I want no part of it. If it's okay, I would like to bring in a friend. A friend? I'd like to bring in my friend Kevin. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the Prime Minister of Australia! Kevin Rudd! I'll tell you I'm not so shall we? Yeah. yeah. You seem to be quite popular. <laughs> no, you just warmed them up. I did warm them up. <laughs> I was good at that. Hey, I've been wanting to ask you a question. You weren't driving uh, a truck in country Victoria. Like <laughs> Let me just be absolutely frank. Um, the police have interviewed me, but it wasn't me. <laughs> <laughs> and so you're happy to be here today? How are you Ab feeling about it? Oh, pretty nervous. Uh, the 1903 question. I mean, that's, uh, that's rough. Yeah. That's seriously rough. Thank you, Prime Minister. <laughs> it's rough in the sense that Mikey disappointed an entire nation by not knowing <laughs> So you were generally impressed with his knowledge of Australian politics? I was stunned, actually. I mean, it, he did really well early on, but everyone knew it was December 16th, 1903. <laughs> I didn't. I, lo that, I love your country, PM. <laughs> There's a Canadian in the back there. OK. Um, Done a really nice job with him. We're going to check his visa later. <laughs> So are you ready to dive in on behalf of Claire's team? Uh, my country beckons. Yeah. Your team beckons, Prime Minister. <laughs> don't stuff it up. Okay. Oh, man, how often do you get to say that to the Prime Minister? 
If you're a member of my staff, every day. <laughs> Thanks for stepping in, Your Majesty. <laughs> Are you anxious? I am. <laughs> Where was the first ever meeting of the Australian Labour Party held? In a church in Bogadilla? In a pub in Borolula? In where? Borolula. Borolula. Can you just have one more time? Borolula. <laughs> Borolula. <laughs> How would you pronounce it? Borolula. <laughs> Borolula. Borolula. You've yeah, lost you. that, that'll lecture it. <laughs> <laughs> Judging by the name, it's probably in a country party scene. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> Under a gum tree at Buck Alden. This is tricky because... Are you just building the tension there? <laughs> <laughs> or is it tricky? It is tricky because it was um, certainly at Buck Alden. There was a gum tree. But after they did what they did at the gum tree, they then went to the pub and had the first meeting. Uh, by six o'clock, they had the first split in the Australian Labor Party. <laughs> Probably by nine o'clock, um, they'd forgotten what the split was about. But someone remember the next day we'd establish the Australian Labor Party, so I go for Bar Corbin. Let's just see if the Prime Minister is right. Yes! Oh, you're giving Mikey a run for his money already. <laughs> just don't get him fixated on the 1903 thing. It was just um, a big stuff up. <laughs> <laughs> Billy Hughes served as Prime Minister twice, as leader of two different parties. Were they the Liberal Party and the ALP, the Nationalist Party and the ALP, or the Birthday Party and the Bad Seeds? <laughs> Um, Billy Hughes, uh, um, two parties. You know what Billy Hughes said toward the end of his life? They invited him to run for the then country party. Is this like Mikey's Yahoo Serious story? <laughs> I'm buying time, right. while I think. And at the end of Billy Hughes's life, they asked him why he wouldn't write, run for the country party, and he leant over about the age of 90 and said, a man's got to draw the line somewhere. Because <laughs> he'd run for every other party by that stage. I reckon he certainly was the head of the Labor Party. Uh, and then he ratted, uh, and he certainly was with the Nationalists for a while, so I'd go for number two. Billy the Rat Hughes, Nationalist Party and the ALP. Let's have a look. Yeah. I, I, I knew that, and I, 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 still, I still love uh, Bat members of the ALP. 85 years later, they still hold a grudge. He's still a rat. <laughs> you know what I liked about that? That was a very nice, relaxed answer. And I'm thinking this would be a much better format for question time. Just, uh, you, you could be there, Kevin, and Tony Abbott, and just have a nice chat, and everyone could chip in behind you. <laughs> I don't know if I really want to be Tony Abbott. <laughs> Why don't you be Tony Abbott? I'll be you. That'd be fun. Oh, well, hang on, hang on. Uh, you can be Tony Abbott, cranky ex-Catholic. <laughs> <laughs> and I look fine in a pair of sluggos as well. <laughs> I think, I think the nation and me and a pair of sluggos is something the nation doesn't want to see. I think we should put that to the nation, Prime Minister. I know, I know what the result would be. <laughs> oh, don't put yourself down like that. Really... I'm acting on the advice of my wife. <laughs> oh, oh. Uh, this could have bearing on the next question, Behave then. Behave over there. <laughs> this is a family show. Oh, yeah, sadly, not after this one. Australia... <laughs> Australian Prime Ministers have had two beards and three moustaches. Yep. <laughs> three beards and four moustaches. Or 25 penises. <laughs> if you don't know, you don't deserve to lead this great country, sir. Technically, there is a trick in this question because I'm the 26th Prime Minister. Ooh. Oh. <laughs> well, we've got an answer to the Sluggo question, haven't we? Why is this lady over here the one to always laugh first at innuendo? You know? <laughs> could we just have her interviewed later on? Oh, we, could have her, we could have her removed if you'd like. Yeah. <laughs> 
We can do these sort of things together with the Canadian's visa. <laughs> Let me see. Great country. Can I, um, <laughs> can I phone a friend? You can phone a friend. Have you got a friend? Uh, well, I'm declining in number, but um, I'm just going to ring Hawkey. <laughs> Oh, because he, he had two, didn't he? <laughs> no, 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 Bob's busy. The, um, um... Call Tony. <laughs> um, excuse me, Mr. It Tom It depends Minister. whether Tony's campaigning or not. Don't forget that Tom Ballard works on the ABC, so you can fire him. <laughs> Look, I reckon uh, the safest answer to this is um, three beards, four moustaches. There you go. What? <laughs> Go the first one. Probably. <laughs> On reflection, I've. Uh... <laughs> and having reviewed all the incoming data from relevant government departments, I've concluded. <laughs> It's probably number one, two beers and three moustaches. Let's see if the Prime Minister is right. Oh! Kenny! <laughs> the Prime Minister. Yeah, I know. What, haven't you done last year's tax or something? <laughs> I haven't done tax no. for the last ten. Oops. <laughs> it's next year's we're interested in. And we'll be coming back with more political mastermind with the Prime Minister, Kevin Rudd, after this break. It's good news Welcome back to Political Mastermind with the Prime Minister, Kevin Rudd. If you divide the number of Prime Ministers who have died in office by the number of individuals who have served as Prime Minister, what are your chances of making it to the next election? <laughs> You know the really disturbing thing in this job, when I go and sort of go to the gym and things? Is that the disturbing thing? <laughs> you and I agreed beforehand I was not going to mention Lycra, OK? Yeah. <laughs> the, um, no. Um, the disturbing thing in this job, when you go for a swim, I was in Tassie on holiday recently, you go to Freycinet, anyone know where Freycinet? Yeah. Because it's a terrific part of Australia. And you go into the water there and the surf and you've got these completely panicked looks on the faces of the AFP, saying silently, don't do a Harold. <laughs> <laughs> or when you go to the gym, as I did this morning, they're, there and they're carrying this red bag. I said, what's in the red bag? Oh, just a defibrillator. <laughs> <laughs> they don't have a lot of faith in you, do they? <laughs> It's We'd very deflating. Um, okay, let, we let, didn't, let, show me we the didn't want to take you into dark territory here, but it's either 11.6%, 50-50, or 88.4%. I'd go the 88.4. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Yeah. Right. Uh, you're at 25 points now. You equal Mikey's score no, with these next two was that, was that questions. Hard? It didn't seem hard at all. It seemed effortless for you. Well, he, he, he is the Prime Minister. <laughs> we have two more questions. Yep. You could exceed his score. Which Australian Prime Minister famously said, Life wasn't meant to be easy. Malcolm Fraser in a lecture, 1971. Harold Holt, underwater. <laughs> in 1967. Or Kevin Rudd to a flight attendant. <laughs> Take your time, Prime Minister. <laughs> I'm sure that's not exactly what I said. <laughs> um, Malcolm Fraser, lecture 1971. That's a Fraserian remark from Central Casting. Fraserian remark? Yeah. I like that. Is that in the Macquarie? Fraserian? Uh, no, no. Oh, it should be after this. It will be, it will be. <laughs> Can you make that happen? Can you make it happen? Can you get words in the dictionary? Yeah, the expelling the Canadian, fixing up your tax and getting out <laughs> to Macquarie, we'll, we'll do it all. <laughs> Let's see if the Prime Minister's right. Oh! Uh, and now the last question for you, possibly the hardest, yep. I think, of the day for a perfect score. Right. I'm anxious. Oh? Hey? 
Hey, what's it like meeting Obama? He's really good. <laughs> I had this little foreign policy matrix going through my head, so that's why. It's good. He's really good. That should be his next slogan. Obama, he's really good. <laughs> so many people jumped on the Barack Obama bandwagon, which as an African-American uh, really offends me. <laughs> he's really smart and he's really cool and he's coming Thank to you. Australia soon. Yeah. Uh, what was John Howard worst at? Cricket? <laughs> Power walking? <laughs> or winning the 2007 election? Cricket, I have complete empathy with John Howard in cricket. Uh, his uh, wrist action failed him. Where was, where was that in Pakistan that day? <laughs> Hi, hi, hi. Hi, hi. I'm ashamed Mike, of our it audience. Could happen. <laughs> she did it again. The, um, um, excuse hi. me, I saw I did see footage of you, Prime Minister, clapping and your wrist action failed you. You were like this. <laughs> so don't get too smug over there, you know? <laughs> but I did much worse. I don't, over the summer, I was down in Tasmania, Bell Reeve, and uh, been in Tasmania a fair bit. Was this on the Was this on the Fresnay journey as well? It's on the Fresnay journey, but I caught a day's cricket in the series between Australia and um, and Pakistan. Anyway, mid middle of the day, they pull us out there to throw some uh, balls down to these Bowl, little kids. Probably. <laughs> I think that that could be the problem. Throw the ball rather than bowling it. Maybe that maybe that's the issue there. <laughs> I used to be in the. Yandina C team in rural Queensland. I, you know, I know a fair bit about my cricket. I came in. <laughs> they used to bring me in at number 11 and then just all moan. <laughs> yeah, but what I did that day with my own wrist action was I managed to absolutely, absolutely bowl this four year old out. <laughs> no one is there. I really. I really liked the Prem Premier of Tasmania. He looked around at me and said, Kevin, that was really dumb. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm with John Howard. We're both uh, cricket tragics and both complete cricket failures. I'm going with the cricket. Oh, I'd just like to read the question again. <laughs> what was John Howard worst at? Worst? He was worst at that one, sure. <laughs> yeah, he was worst at that one. Do you think? Look, with I'm... a wider view oh. and more time to reflect, <laughs> I think we'd have to look at uh, the 2007 outcome, so I'm going C. <laughs> that score, of course, makes you mover and shaker of the sauce bottle, which is wonderful. Well, we should always have that sauce bottle there to shake. Um, but I did... <laughs> Oi! It's all right, Prime Minister, they're on drugs. <laughs> Well, that's four things I've got to attend to after this program. <laughs> but I did have help for two of those questions. I really appreciate that, and your taxes will be fine. <laughs> Up next, the hot spot. Please thank the Prime Minister again. <laughs> this is Hot Spot, where the big questions about the news of the week. Meet the finest minds with nothing to do on a Monday night. Robin's team, are you ready? Yes, little fella. Y okay. Yeah. <laughs> uh, what's the most humane way to kill a wabbit? <laughs> Ooh. With kisses. Woo! <laughs> 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 well, it's isn't it? You get a little tiny rabbit-sized car and a little tiny rabbit-sized mobile phone <laughs> and then you send it to a little tiny rabbit-sized petrol station and tell it to text someone. Um, put it in a man called Warren. <laughs> Get it to smuggle drugs into Indonesia. Um, That's no longer our problem, am I right? <laughs> <laughs> 
Colonel Sanders KFR. <laughs> uh, get Mikey to uh, tell it one of his showbiz stories. <laughs> If we use the leftover pots to spell out a message on the roof of Parliament House, <laughs> what would it say? Free pots! <laughs> Send plants! <laughs> Bill and Ben live here. <laughs> you would want to hope with the free pots that they had enough pots to make the S at the end, wouldn't you? <laughs> Otherwise... But it's OK, it's Canberra, it's legal. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Apart from research, what's another nice word for torture? Wailing? <laughs> Well, it's not so much a word, but a phrase. Um, Mikey Robbins shit showbiz stories. <laughs> oh, yeah. Sorry, Mikey. Uh, marriage vows. <laughs> <laughs> Have I ever told you about the time I met Cookie from Country Practice? <laughs> 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 Clash of the Titans! <laughs> what should the government do with Peter Garrett now? He's the Environment Minister, so I would suggest mulching. <laughs> Putting him out on Ashmore Reef doing this at refugee boats. They could get him to insulate Parliament House. <laughs> what should people do with their old Midnight Oil albums? <laughs> Use them to insulate their roofs. <laughs> Way to sell it. <laughs> I'm sorry, Peter, I quite like you. <laughs> But, you know, I've got to pay the bills, you know. <laughs> Hang in there, <laughs> What's the worst thing about raising the drinking age 21? Demi Moore won't be able to find future husbands. <laughs> uh, uh, nice work. Sadly, 19-year-olds will have to watch Cougar Town sober. <laughs> Young people won't be able to forget that they work in fast food establishments. <laughs> what would you not want Kevin Rudd to overhear you saying backstage? <laughs> I loved you and knocked up. I'd hate him to overhear anything that I said that was so good it made him want to clap. <laughs> good luck out there. <laughs> no, no, Prime Minister, that doesn't look infected. What should Tiger Woods have said in his public apology? Can you believe how much action I got? I play golf! <laughs> Gonna ask the last one now. What are Australians good at in the snow? <laughs> <laughs> Writing our name. <laughs> That's it, ladies and gentlemen, we're done. Train for two is next.
trying to get to the bottom of the strange but true saga, Mikey Stewart, Tom. You had the mammoth. Wilma, I'm home. <laughs> yes, yes. Fred wasn't a mammoth. <laughs> no, he was a water buffalo. But this is as close as I'll ever get. <laughs> Oh, I see. It was a sort of veiled Masonic Lodgy um, reference thing, wasn't it? Actually, I, I feel like Mr. Snuffleupagus's goth mate. <laughs> I'm glad you didn't say Mr. Snuffleupagus's sexual partner. <laughs> oh, bird, that's gonna hurt. <laughs> we also... Oh, I'm getting nasty images in my mind. I won't be able to watch Sesame Street again. One, two, three orgasms! Ah! <laughs> <laughs> ah, ah, ah. We also have the takeaway. I can't stop thinking about my wedding night. <laughs> we went out for dinner. And Holding that pencil makes you look ridiculous, by the way. <laughs> yeah, seriously, mate. <laughs> uh, and we also have this. Oh, let's not forget performing in the Adelaide Fringe in the Melbourne Comedy Festival tripod. Sweated out on the streets of a runaway American dream. At night we ride through mansions of glory and suicide machines. Sprung from cages on Highway 9, chrome wheel, fuel injected, and stepping out over the line. Whoa, baby, this town rips your bones from your bag. It's a death trap, it's a suicide rap. We better get out while we're young. Tramps like us, baby, we were born to run. Oh, 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 Give us a tripod, ladies and gentlemen. That's them. <laughs> Catch them live. Adelaide Fringe. Catch them live. Uh, do we have a way of connecting well, these extraordinary clues? Well, obviously, this side. is a um, <coughs> what's left of. Well, actually, it's what's left of some polystyrene and some carpet, <laughs> but it represents uh, a mammoth, a woolly mammoth, dare I say, a, a prehistoric creature, as indeed would. Um, yeah. Sort of caveman behaviour. So thinking about sort of the Ice Age or something, this running, well, born, born to run, this running involved. There's running involved. That there's a new, you know, there's always new exercise and diet craze, craze coming up, and they think that there's, I think the last one's called, is that the caveman? Neanderthals, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. If you if you live like you know, because cavemen were either running after something to eat it, yeah, or running away from something so they weren't eaten, because mammoths ate a lot of early man. This is happening, it's happening in the States, so it's the Bush family, isn't it? Yes. <laughs> so we're, 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 we're devolving slowly. Um, so cavemen are, are more healthy than we are now? Yeah, apart from the whole sort of spearing and dying of diseases, oh, yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. so, the, the idea is that if we lived more like cavemen, we'd be fitter and healthier and... Ah! Exactly. <laughs> and have rubber gloves hanging off our bones. Uh, yeah, it's like you, can actually, you can build up forearm strength by dragging your wife by a hair, for example. It's a good, it's a good workout. <laughs> So yeah, it's, it's, it's basically a caveman exercise regime. That's our answer. That's what we think it is. They do have it. <laughs> some, some stone tablets. There's a new prehistoric subculture in the US where people act like cavemen because they believe it's a more healthy way to live. Oh, we call that Queensland. <laughs> <laughs> but it's not just wild Stone Age abandoned. There's a long list of yabba dabba doos and yabba dabba don'ts. <laughs> 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 I'd like to apologise for that. It's called evolutionary fitness, a belief that the human body is best suited to the lifestyle we had tens of thousands of years ago. The modern cavemen call themselves paleos because hippie, dropout and pox-ridden feral were already taken. 
they practiced climbing, sprinting and leaping as if they still lived in fear of marauding mammoths. And then, after lunch, they pretend they're on a pirate ship. <laughs> <laughs> the good news is, it's not just the fitness benefits that could see them living longer. If enough Americans go back to living in caves, one of them might find Osama. <laughs> oh, no. Oh. No. Thank you. Claire Tom Corinne, your clues were the voodoo doll. It's and not a cheery voodoo doll, is it? <laughs> <laughs> they tend not to be. We also have a feather boa. And did a you turn them on before? Did. You didn't, did you? Mm. Mum, Dad, I've got something I want to tell you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in show business. Oh! <laughs> you, you want to tell your parents you're a cowboy? <laughs> <laughs> the most beautiful cowboy in the ball. <laughs> Oh, God. And finally, this. The awesome Alana Stone! She was a fast machine, she kept her motor clean, she was the best damn woman that I've ever seen. Zaning, but the, the smell of that gunpowder and phosphorus and... Have you ever been to Rotorua? Yeah. <laughs> a lot like that. Um, do we have a story there? I think it's got to be a, a, a Haiti story. The, um, the earthquake, the earth was shaking, you know. The really? Took me all yeah, I really think so because um, voodoo is a... Was it in a good Voodoo's way, big. like in the song, though, was it? I mean, in the good way. No, no, no. no. <laughs> this isn't the story. This isn't the story about the, the nut bar American right wing preacher who said that the Haitians brought this on themselves by making a deal with the devil. Well, no. And he was also a slut. How does Voodoo cause an earthquake? Well, did someone put needles in New Zealand and then Haiti started shaking? <laughs> And all this is great. It's not, in fact, the story that we're trying to... We are in Haiti. The we are. Story? We're not in... We're in Australia. <laughs> but I love your enthusiasm. Yeah, but is this guy in Haiti? Is he in Haiti? The story is. He's this in Haiti. Is the news story is... Is this guy in Haiti? Well, it may be a guy at the end of the evening, but at the moment, it's not representative of a guy. I think there was... There's something in my head about uh, strippers. Uh, maybe... Is there? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> i got to shit off, actually. Uh... <laughs> Oh, I think that's going a bit too far. I think, uh, I, think uh, I think we draw no, the line there. No, sorry. No, keep your Kevin Rudd filth to yourselves, all right, ladies and gentlemen. No, I think it's about strippers. I think who who did a bit of like uh, fundraising for Haiti. A lot of people getting behind the Haiti benefit and raising money for Haiti. And I think maybe these were these were some. Uh, some women of the night. Hookers with hearts of gold. Hookers oh, with hearts of gold. Hookers with hearts of gold. 
That's very, very close. They may not necessarily have been hookers just because your strip doesn't... Strippers. Oh, strippers. oh, they're strippers with hearts of gold. <laughs> doesn't mean you, you for give it out for everywhere. Strippers. Gosh, Paul, you, you can keep telling your parents that over and over again. There was a strip club called Maryland's on Monroe uh, Street. You don't want to go to Whoopi's on Goldberg Street. <laughs> They do have all the component parts in there, ladies and gentlemen. A strip club in Ohio is raising funds for victims of the earthquake with what they're calling lap dances for Haiti. <laughs> lap dances for Haiti. And they've raised heaps. Money too. So far... <laughs> so far, Tiger Woods has donated 17 million. <laughs> they, they decided to run lap dances for Haiti after the great success of Tits Out for Tibet. <laughs> Uh, yes, you can donate to charity and help those in need while being sexually aroused by a gyrating hottie. Are you listening, World Vision? <laughs> the club's first effort raised $1,150. The men said they didn't really want pneumatic semi-naked ladies dry humping them, but they'd do whatever it takes to save Hawaii. <laughs> Stay tuned, the rubble rousers. Fast Money is next. Here we go, doing it for Haiti, the lap dancing fast money box in Kentucky. A man is in jail after trying to collect a reward for information about a robbery. What did he do wrong? <laughs> he was the robber. Thank you very much. <laughs> Dad, do you know uh, what tips Yeah, well, he basically walked in and they, they recognised him and went, hang on, aren't you just describing yourself, idiot? Get the cell. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> He was wearing the same clothes. Yeah. In Italy, a top food writer has been suspended from his job on a cooking show. Why? He, he boiled a bunny? No. What? Very close, very close. I ate human flesh. Wasn't wearing a cravat. <laughs> Anybody? Anybody know? Anybody He's know? in Italy and he made something other than pasta. <laughs> <laughs> he recommended stewed cat as a succulent dish. Oh, no. Oh, the network dropped uh, Beppi Bigazzi after he offered the recipe for a casserole of cat on Italy's version of Ready Steady Cook. <laughs> Actually, I think it's called Ready Steady Puke. <laughs> in Canada, Prime Minister Stephen Harper has over 30,000 fans on his Facebook page. So a rival page was set up to see if we could get more. Who was the star of this page? Me. <laughs> Did you get more? You're close. It was... I didn't even know you had a Prime Minister. Well done, Canada. Thank you. <laughs> Showing that ignorance is not only good, it can be fun. <laughs> it, it was a French onion ring. Thank you very much, it's an onion ring. I don't know about the nationality. In the lead-up to Valentine's Day, a department store in the UK reported a 76% increase in sales of a particular men's garment. What was it? G-bungers. Yeah, G-strings. What are G-bungers? Oh, G-strings. G-strings. <laughs> no one wants to see Yes, it is jobs. underwear, but yeah. does anyone know what type of underwear? Edible. No. Oh, this is sad. This is so... So it's not G-strings, it's a box of shorts. It's anatomy-boosting underpants. Oh! <laughs> the undies that have the lift and hold feature similar to the Wonder Bra. Oh! They don't work, Did by the way. <laughs> I'm guessing that, unlike the bras, though, the form-fitting underwear doesn't lift and separate. <laughs> I suppose it, it depends what you like. I hope it doesn't separate too much. You can only go so far. <laughs> oh, no! I, actually, that'd be great to have one in each pocket. <laughs> You'll be able to do that when you're a bit older, Mikey. <laughs> uh, yeah. are, there, are there underpants to kind of make it look smaller? <laughs> <laughs> no, do you know if there are? Because it'd, it'd be good to, you know. Yeah, yeah. So it's, it's embarrassing. Oh, no, it's, it's hell for you, isn't it? <laughs> hell for you and your Terry Telling shorts with the piping on the side. <laughs> <laughs> Anyone can answer this. In Switzerland, yes. prostitutes are being trained in the use of what device? Toblerones. <laughs> <laughs> Is a Toblerone a device? Oh, 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 defibrillators! Defibrillators! Thank you very much. She has it, ladies and gentlemen, over there. Thank you, Kevin Rudd. So in the lower house tonight, Mikey Robbins, Stuart Francis and Tom Gleeson scored a questionable 104 points. <laughs> Dispatched by Claire Hooper, Tom Ballard and Corinne Grant on 114 points. <laughs> Close. They had the Prime Minister. Don't yeah, give me the sad eyes. Yeah. 
It was actually those extra 10 points that I gave him for nothing. Yeah, yeah I know. I actually helped him out. Here. You're a Labor Party stooge. Don't forget, 10.com.au slash GNW. If you want to grab the podcast, go behind the scenes or buy a lap dance for Mikey. He's available for singles, couples, hen's nights and school groups. <laughs> so we say thank you and... Good night, Ruby Hunter, and leave you with the good news for the week ahead. In Melbourne, the Queer Film Festival will be launched, and several people will lose an eye in the 3D section. In Canberra, it's... Oh, tasteless. I'm sure it was. In Canberra, in Canberra, it's the royal show. This year, the Queen is going to take on Quentin Bryce in the waiting pool of jelly. <laughs> the Productivity Commission will deliver its final report on problem gambling. Two to one, it's not good. <laughs> and on Saturday night, it's Mardi Gras, so... Frock up or frock off. <laughs> Good night.